Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Julia McNeil Crafts. So today I'm going to be making this card. This is a card I made for the Polka Doodles Challenge this week. It was not the card I intended to make when I came up to my little crafty space. <laughs> it's actually going to be stenciled dog bones and a dog but you know <laughs> it turned into this. It wasn't what I was expecting to make it just kind of happened but I really like the finished result so it wasn't something I'd intended to turn into a video. But actually because I really like the result I decided to do that. So I'm using this branch stencil from Polka Doodles and I'm just going to layer quite a few stencils um, over each other. So I'm going to put this in different colours. I've got Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers and I'm going to blend that into Squeezed Lemonade and blend that into the Spice Marmalade and blend that into the picked raspberry so that we're going to have this these different coloured trees um, coming down down here because you know that's very realistic <laughs> told you i live in a fantasy land okay so i'm just going to hold this down because i am never one of these people that does anything properly if you were going to be really good about it, I suppose you should maybe uh, <laughs> tape it down or something. Depending on the technique, sometimes I do. Um, I've got a few other techniques that I want to show you with stencils. I might actually just do a, a technique video showing different ideas of how to use these stencils all in the one video. In that particular instance, uh, and some of those techniques I would actually tape it down. But for the purposes of this, it's fine to do. So I'm going to put the yellow into the blue. Um, partly because if we went yellow straight into orange we would get mud because you've got all three primary colours. You'd have the blue, the, the yellow and the red that it takes to make orange and so it would just turn into a horrible muddy colour. But the yellow crossing over into the blue will give that just a tinge of green so it's a natural gradient and then because the yellow's there you'll find that it'll then blend into the orange really nicely. So I'm just going to put a bit of orange down here. It doesn't matter if it doesn't turn out quite perfect because we're going to be doing a few different um, techniques um, on top of that. As I said when I first made the card, none of this was intended. <laughs> it just happened. That's the best sort of crafting. That's how I craft. I don't craft very well to a plan. I don't do anything very well to a plan, to be honest. <laughs> as soon as I have a plan, it just seems to fall apart. That's why I never work very well with sketches. There's all these sketch challenges, aren't they? I've just never, ever been able to do them. I've tried them a couple of times, but I just end up looking at it, unable to do anything. So I'm going quite heavy-handed with this. And then how I would clean my stencil is I would get a damp cloth or a wipe. I'm trying not to use wipes, you know, trying to save the ocean and why not be, be aware of uh, our environment. But like get a damp cloth and wipe that into um, a journal and you will get a, a, a different effect. But that's maybe something I'll show you when I do my technique video. I just, I don't know, I've got so many ideas and not enough time. That's always a way of it. I've probably chosen the wrong, wrong shape brush there. Now what I'm going to do, because these are Distress Oxides, I'm just going to lift a little of that. So I'm just going to splash some water over that. And it will lift some of that ink that we've just put on. And again, it's just going to add to the, to the mixed effects. And then I would grab a piece of kitchen roll. And just press that down and lift that up. The other thing that I would do it with is I've been using the maybe I'll do that next time. I've been using a lot of um, the napkins and for art journaling. You might have seen some of the other videos, um, but because they're two ply, you end up pulling a ply off like that. So by doing things like that, possibly lifting your inks up, you could then use that as napkin art in another project. So it's it's being aware of all of these things. It expands your creativity, but it also um, saves on waste. So the next thing I did for some bizarre reason was I decided to overlay 
all my stencils. So I picked up a bit of the, the colour. Now this is from the Accent stencil. Both of these are part of the same stencil. Um, and I chopped mine up because um, well, I found it easier to use. <laughs> chopped up. Um, so it worked for me. So however, however you feel suits you. And then I'm just going to overlay a few little circles in some random places. And I'm kind of creating a very quirky, quirky sort of forest with polka dots in the sky. Why not, eh? At least the next bit you do get stars in the sky, so that's uh, <laughs> that's something. So I'm now going to take the peacock feathers uh, distress oxides, and I'm just going to put a few a few stars into the mix as well. Ooh. A bit brighter than the ones I did in the last card. Never mind. Each card will be unique. Now I've kind of messed up a little bit there, you can see, but it's okay. Um, I'll go in now with a big star, that'll cover some of it, and then I will cover the rest of it with um, the sentiment. That's why we've ended up with sentiments there on this card, because I messed up a bit there. So there's, all, there's always a way to fix it. Don't stress, just have fun. Okay, so I'm going to add a few more in there and then finally what I did was I got my Great Outdoors stencil which is this one and um, I only have the one half to hand because this is the half I needed but it does have two halves to this <laughs> and uh, again I chopped mine up because I can uh, because it made it easier so now I'm just kind of almost going to create a bit of a forest a forest floor here so I'm going in with the Distress Oxide Lemonade. To be honest, this goes a little bit muddy, but we kind of hide it anyway. It's because we've got that red in the background and we're going over it a little bit. Um, but it's fine. It does the job. So I'm just putting a bit of the um, Peacock Feathers there. I moved this stencil over slightly and that will kind of give that illusion of grass. Actually, that's turned out better on this one than it did on my original. So that's all right. Actually, it's green which is quite good. Now, I then took a stamp set. It's a Posy Doodle ones, and before I started recording, I forgot to double check exactly which one it was. Um, so I can't remember the name of it offhand, but it's this one here with the this gorgeous flower and the dragonfly. But what I will do is I'll check before I post this video and I will um, link up to it. Now, I'm just going to try and make this look a bit more realistic so I am going to do a little bit of stamping I'm going to use my stays on it oh sorry random bit of rubbish there can you hear the wind howling I'm in the loft well you know that because I think I probably say that every time but yes you can certainly hear the wind it's blown a hooly as they'd say here <laughs> okay and I'm just going to stamp a few leaves and a few little flowers um, just just as a little bit of a, a little bit of a feature so we've got more of a forest forest floor going on it doesn't matter that the stamping's not perfect you don't really you don't really see see this by the time we've finished anyway okay and then I've got this little squiggly flower it's really cute really cute it's one of these little extras that Nikki pops in that just finishes finishes things off. One of these things you didn't know you needed. <laughs> and then you're like, oh wow. <laughs> How did I live without that? So I've got that and then I've got are those the two I used. I'm gonna put this little rose in as well. I don't think I actually used that on the original, but I'm seeing it now and I'm seeing a little gap here, so let's stick a little quirky rose in there. Okay. Whoops. So just to blend those in slightly, I am going to just paint them up um, with the same Distress Oxides that we used in the background. So I am going to take some of the pink. Put that on my blending mat. Some of the pink and some of the squeezed lemon and some of the peacock feathers. Okay, and I will grab
grab a little, little brush, hopefully I'll have one to hand. I think the first few videos I did I was so organised and had everything set up and now I am doing them as I normally craft, which is in complete and utter mental. And I have no idea what anything is. I'm not fussed about doing brilliant colouring with lots of shading in this particular instance. It's just a suggestion um, of something there as opposed to the main feature. It's not really something that anybody's really going to be looking at. Um, so it doesn't need to be it doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm putting a bit of pink into those flowers. Just remember to have the roses there as well. And then I'm just going to mix up a little bit of green with that um, with the yellow and the teal there and just pop that in. This is where it starts to look slightly muddy because we're going over that those red branches. Honestly my English is shocking today. Those, not that. Okay, so just popping that in there. Okay, I'm just going to let this dry a little second. I'm just going to pop off camera for a second, cut this down to size, and then get ready to do the, the second half, which shouldn't take too long. Okay, so I'm back. I've chopped my card down. Um, ready to go onto it, the base layer and as I always do I'm just going to edge it with a black pen. I just always think it's these little things that make make a difference, make it stand out. It's all the little bits. It will draw the eye in to see this part because it's got that touch of black and it separates it from the layers behind. If you're making cards with lots of pattern papers and you layer one on top of the other. It's that. It's this sort of thing, edging it with something um, that helps to separate all those all those layers and allows you to see. And so it's a little thing, but to me, I just I can't seem to manage to make a card without edging it like that and, and doing a little bit of doodling. Now on this card, I've got some little splodgy bits coming off. Now that was actually to cover a finger mark. <laughs> But I like the way it turned out, so on this card I'm going to deliberately do that because I like the way it turned out. So I want my little splodges in quite specific places. So what I tend to do, let me make sure I'm on camera, is just draw a little corner where I, where I know the edge of the card is. So now I know that I want the stamping to come out from here. And what I did was I coordinated the colours. So in the top corner, because I've got the blue and the yellow there, I'm going to stamp blue and yellow. And down here, I've got the pink and yellow blended together. So I'm going to go for those colours just here. In the same stamp set that I was using before, there's this great little splodge stamp. Again, it's one of these things you think, what's that? Um, but you find yourself using it all the time. Look at my filthy acrylic block. I think the first couple of videos I did, they were my stuff was absolutely pristine. I cleaned all my blocks. I think I actually got the acetone out and gave it really clean so it all looked lovely. And uh, that's all gone by the wayside. <laughs> so I'm going to stamp some of the yellow first. Um, and I'm going to do some down here because both, both sides are going to get the yellow. And both corners even. Just kind of randomly, randomly doing that, and I, I've done it. So I kept stamping there without constantly re-inking, and that gives it. It means you've got the first, second, and third generation there, um, so it gives it a, a more tonal. I don't know, I'm pulling that off. A more tonal effect, um, more realistic because you've got the different, different shades. So I'm going to put a little bit of the the blue in there. Now a lot of what I'm stamping here is going to be covered by the card because that's my point there. So it just it means I know exactly where to stamp to have it sort of peeping out. Um, so that's that one. Now I need to remember to just give this a quick quick clean. I've got a little tissue here. So I need to give that a quick clean because obviously I don't want purple, which is what I will get if I put the blue and the pink together. So I'm just wanting to make sure that that pink is nice and clean and crisp. And so we're just going to stamp a little bit, a little bit like that. Okay, so that then 
should be my corners done. So once I put that there, I've now got that little bit of splatter um, coming, coming off. So I'm going to hope that this glue is working. I have a feeling it might not be because it's not had its pin in it. But we'll see how. See how we go. Will I have to go off camera to get the glue working? Looks quite likely. <laughs> okay then. Oh dear, I will be back in two seconds. Well, well that was entertaining. <laughs> I, I got my glue working and I have stuck it down. <laughs> Shows you should look after your stuff. Right. <laughs> I am going to decorate the rest of it using this um, paper pad. This is the Posy Doodles um, 6x6 paper pad and it's gorgeous. Uh, mine is well loved so you'll see lots of bits um, missing. Ooh. Lots of bits. I would buy this paper pad for this page alone because it's got loads of really unusual senten uh, sentences, sentiments. There we go, we've got Prosecco time, spend today like you mean it, just believe in yourself, decisions, decisions, take umbrage. <laughs> be fabulous, it's just it, absolutely loads. So whether you're really into journaling and mixed media, perfect for that. And also it's just quirky sentiments for a card. So I've used that for this card. I also have used um, this one here, which is, I've cut the mushrooms, I fussy cut the mushrooms out. And I also used this one and I've cut some of the butterflies out. So that's how I am going to embellish um, my card. And I've sat there and the reason why I've suddenly kind of lost the ability to talk is because <laughs> the bits that I have already cut out and pre-prepared were sat there and I'm trying to see where I've put them. So I've put them over here. <laughs> a slight panic mode there. Okay, so I've already cut these bits out. Um, I think there's one I don't think you'd want to watch me for hours fussy cutting, um, but it's it's quite easy to do, um, and you just go around the main shape. So although this paper was quite fussy, um, not fussy, but it's got a lot going on. It's got all the leaves and the flowers. That all I want is the little mushroom, and you can just very quickly do that. It's much easier, and you get a nicer finish if you move your paper and not your scissors. And these are my little fiskers. I think. I've got the Tim Holtz ones, but they've got quite a serrated edge, and for this sort of thing, I just I like it smooth because quite often as well, once I've cut something out like that, um, I, I'll maybe ink grind it. I'm not today, but I do that quite a lot. So let's hope my glue still works after being attacked with a piece of wire. <laughs> oh dear, so I'm going to tuck one one behind here. I've stuck it down too well now. Um, I'll just chop a bit off. I'm going to have one so that it's peeping out and peeping out the back there and I kind of want it level with the the actual picture because I kind of almost want that to be almost like the ground ground level continued and then I cut these ones out as well and this one because it was at the edge of the paper just has I'm just going to tie that up to the edge like that and then I've got another little mushroom here. Now, this is where I strategically place my butterflies. <laughs> is there any bits in the background that I'm not completely thrilled with how they've turned out? And let's cover them up. So I'm going to put two butterflies just over here. I'm actually going to put the other butterfly here because in this one here I remembered to cut round the leaf um, but I got a bit carried away with this one and actually chopped it off. So just to disguise the fact that we're missing half a leaf, I'll stick a butterfly there and you would never know. Butterflies are wonderful for hiding a multitude of sins. Okay, I've got slightly different sentiments on this one because I think on this one I've got Hi, happy everything, you're my best friend. Um, and I just chose slightly different ones for this. I've got You Are Amazing. Um, you Can Do Anything. A nice encouraging card this, isn't it? It's almost feeling a bit, a bit like they're 
no use to any, anybody, then something like this would be really cute. And I'm just going to put the B fabulous there. Then, as you can see, I have done lots of doodling, so I just did a really rough squiggle round, round the edges there. And I'm, I'm not going for perfect, I am trying to make it look rough and squiggly. And then I just did a few kind of squiggly, squiggly lines, just to almost make it look like, I don't know, stitching and a bit of doodle. The other thing I did was I kind of did some faux, some little scribbles just around there, almost like a grass line um, for the end of that. And then finally what I did was draw this border, which if you follow my channel I have done this. On nearly everything, I think nearly every journal page <laughs> has this little doodle border and it takes quite a while to do so I will do that off camera but I think you probably um, get, the, get the idea with that anyway so I will just leave that as it is and uh, for just now if you've enjoyed the video please do consider liking and subscribing leaving a comment that lets people on YouTube know, my, know I'm here <laughs> and uh, hopefully it means I can keep bringing you lots more videos like this. So please do like and subscribe if you enjoyed and I will see you again very soon. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.